Hi friends, now let us discuss the next theory on evolution that is mutation theory. There are two versions of mutation theory. They are mutation theory of Hugo de Vries and modern version of mutation theory. The mutation theory was proposed for the first time by Hugo de Vries in the year 1901 after conducting experiments on a plant by name Enothera lamarckiana. Later, number of changes took place in the field of molecular biology and Mendel's laws were announced. After the incorporation of the Mendel's laws and the developments in the field of molecular biology, that mutation theory of Hugo de Vries is called modern version of mutation theory. Modern version of mutation theory is nothing but the modified mutation theory after the incorporation of the Mendel's loss of inheritance and the developments in the field of molecular biology. First, let us discuss mutation theory of Hugo de Vries. According to Hugo de Vries, mutations are nothing but variations, which are sudden, large and inheritable. He observed that in certain plants and animals, suddenly some large variations appear. From then onwards, they will be inheritable. That means they will be transmitted to number of generations. They are sudden, large and inheritable variations. Instead of sudden, in some textbooks, they use the term discontinuous. Sudden, they are not taking place in each and every generation. Now and then. Sudden, large, inheritable variations which appear in different life forms, they can be plants or animals, are called mutations. Once again, I am repeating, mutations are nothing but variations which are sudden, large, inheritable. And according to Hugo de Vries, these mutations, that means these sudden, large and inheritable variations are of two varieties, useful mutations and harmful mutations. Mutations are nothing but variations according to Hugo de Vries. These variations can be useful or harmful. These mutations will be subjected to natural selection. That means useful mutations will be selected and harmful mutations will be eliminated. Even after the elimination, again the mutations may reappear in different members of the population. That's why the mutations are said to be recurrent and at the same time, a same type of mutation can occur simultaneously in multiple individuals. That's why the mutations are said to be concurrent. That means they occur simultaneously in multiple individuals. This is about mutation theory of Hugo de Vries. Very simple. Mutations are nothing but sudden, large, inheritable variations. They can be useful mutations or harmful mutations. They are subjected to natural selection. Then harmful mutations will be eliminated. Even after elimination, there are chances for reoccurrence. That's why that is called recurrence. That phenomena is called recurrence. That's why the mutations are said to be recurrent. And at the same time, a same type of mutation, whether they can be useful mutations or harmful mutations, can appear simultaneously in multiple individuals. That's why mutations are said to be concurrent. In your exam, mention some examples for mutations. One is Ancon sheep. Ancon sheep are nothing but sheep with short and bowed legs. Harmless cattle. Albinism. Albinism means it is a condition characterized by absence of pigment in the skin. You can see in some of the individuals, absence of pigment in the skin, pure white color skin you can come across. Their parents may be normal, suddenly the children with the pure white color, that means in the skin there will be absence of pigment. Their eyes, hair, everything will be white in color. That condition is called albinism. Multi-nippled condition, the breast bird is called nipple. In some females, we can come across development of multiple nipples along the lateral part of the body. 
generally two breasts and uh, we can come across two nipples but in some females you can come across multiple nipples here that is also sudden appearance multi nipple condition is another example hair lip or cleft lip in some individuals in the upper lip we have continuous upper lip but in some individuals you can come across one gap in the middle of the lip that is called cleft lip or hair lip these are the some of the examples for mutations sometimes in your exam tricky questions may be asked especially in 10 marks questions they may ask question they may ask a question like this mutation theory of hugo de vries mutation theory of hugo de vries means you have to write these points and give some examples this is sufficient in the later classes we are going to study mutations once upon a time according to hugo de vries mutations are nothing but variations which are sudden large and inheritable but now it is not so mutation is nothing but change in dna sequence from now onwards we will continuously study the mutations and whenever we use the term mutation that means change in dna sequence don't get confused whenever the question is asked mutation theory of hugo de vries then consider mutations as variations which are sudden large and inheritable the sudden large inheritable variations are produced actually because of change in dna sequence at that point of time hugo de vries did not know all these things what is the dna sequence how it can cause sudden variations how it will become inheritable all these things he did not know that's why he, if the question is asked on mutation theory of hugo de vries don't mention the term dna you have to mention that they are variations which are sudden large and inheritable so far not even a single question was asked if they want to ask any question from the mutation theory of hugo de vries they will ask it directly mutation theory of hugo de vries please be cautious don't try change in dna sequence as mutation if the question is asked on the mutation theory of hugo de vries now the next one is modern version of mutation theory if you want to understand the modern version of mutation theory you must know what are the mendel's laws without knowing the mendel's laws it is not possible for us to understand the modern version of mutation theory that's why from next class onwards we'll study mendel's laws after the completion of mendel's laws again we'll study the modern version of mutation theory